that universe of things that we are interested in, we call it population. So in day-to-day -day life, when we talk about population, you think about people, persons who have hand and eyes and those kind of things. But population, uh, from the scientific point of view, we can talk about the population of all of the atoms in the universe, which we are interested in their behavior. The population of all of the planets and the stars and everything. Population is all of the subjects of our interest. And unfortunately, we are limited beings and we don't have access to the population, although we are interested in the population. So what do we do? To understand the whole universe, what did we do? What did we yeah. rely on? Our best. Ample. Yeah, but, but what is our best? What is a scientist doing in the lab? Is experimenting with what? Sample. Sample. Very good. That is the word that we are interested in. So I, it's just a new vision. So now you understand that when you were going to chemistry lab, you were practicing and exercising what you can do with a tiny sample of universe. But you were talking, you were trying to find out the behavior. Now, you, like when you went into the lab, were you really interested in that piece of lithium? No. You are interested in the behavior of all of the lithiums and all of the matter in the earth and in the universe. But we do, we cannot test all of the universe. We just test a sample. So what we do, not only in physics, but also in business, is that what we really have access to is a sample. Okay? Just we have to absorb it. It is an important point in your life to understand that what we know, anything that you know, is based on a sample. Okay? Do you know Canadian people? Do you know Canadian people? Yep. No, yep. you don't. You don't know. Canadian people are 33 million people, and in your life you have seen 1,000 of them. You don't know Canadian people. You only have experience with a few Canadian sample. You also don't know American people. How many people are the population of United States? 300 something million. Yeah, 350 million. And you have seen, you know, 50 of them, plus 500 movies. If we add them together, it would be 550. So you don't know people of United States. You don't know people of Singapore. You don't know anything. You have tiny samples and whatever judgment we are making is based on that tiny sample. Okay? So I just want you to know. So do you know your target market? Now let's go to the topic of this course. Do we know who are in our target market? Do you know what is the consumer behavior in Canada? No. We can't know it. Like I, I, This word can't, you know, because we want to be precise. Okay, let's say our research question is this. We want to know if people of Canada, what percentage of people of Canada will buy this product? So my first, like I write it precisely. What percentage of Canadians will buy this product. This is a research question you will see in your market research course, of course, after you pass this course. Um, you will have similar questions in operations management. Okay. It's the first question. Can we know it? Is it possible to know it? Yeah, yes. I, I know. Just to be theoretically correct, it is possible. Like to know that, I have to take my product, go to 35 million people, ask them, uh, you know, similar to Newton. Like Newton could go to every particle in the universe, theoretically, and test their behavior. Okay? So to answer that question, I can take my product to the first person. Will you buy this product? 
if you buy this product, I will be happy. That person either buys it or not. Then I have to ask 35 million questions. Then I will know what percentage of people will buy this product, right? So it is knowable, but I have to ask 35 million questions. Therefore, it is not feasible. Okay? It is not feasible for us to know what percentage of people in Canada, because the population of Canada is 35 million people. And we cannot ask that question. So the only thing that we can do as market researchers is what? We can do exactly what Newton did. What can we do? Predict. But, but how can we predict the with behavior the with a sample? So we will take a sample. Of course, you know, like, like uh, the scientists to go to Mars and grab that ball of sand to increase the sample size, we will try to have the biggest sample size possible. But the only thing that we can do is to take the biggest sample and rely on that. Are you following me? That's yeah. why that's the similarity between a businessman who wants to make money and Newton from the point of view of what we know about the world. What we know about the world is based on a sample. Okay? So you have a perception about Chinese people. You have a perception about American people. The reason that it is called a perception is that you only have seen a sample of Americans and a sample of Chinese, but you are generalizing it to the population of Americans and population of Chinese. And that's why our predictions are imperfect. We can never say we know anything. This is disappointing, right? The similarity between us uh, is that we cannot say we know things because our knowledge is always incomplete. A new sample may prove us wrong. There are more probable things and there are less probable things, uh, but we are just assuming that what has happened in the past will happen in the future, okay? So that is our similarity, okay? So in this course, we are going to apply this uh, method to understanding the world. We call what is the, what we know, uh, which is always about the sample. Now, by now you must have understood that whatever we know is from a sample. We don't have access to all of the reality of anything. So we usually know what is in the sample. Um, what we know about the sample is called, it has a name, and that name is important for us. That is called a statistic. Okay? So uh, it's important for us to realize that what we know is called a statistic of a sample. What we don't know is called the parameter. Parameter is related to the population. And let's say if we want to know what is the average income of Canadians, to know what is the average income of Canadians, we have to go to 35 million people and ask them, what is your income? Add them, divide by N to get the average. That is called the parameter. We show the parameters or what we are interested in knowing with Greek symbols. They have a lot of gods, okay? And these godly things uh, are not accessible. Nobody has seen Zeus or Apollonius or um, any of those gods. They are in the realm of not accessible. So when we are talking about parameters of the population, we use symbols like mu or sigma or lambda. We use Greek symbols because we are referring to things that they are not accessible to us, but we are interested in knowing them. 
Unfortunately, they are not accessible to us. And unfortunately, we know that we will never know them because we have never access to all of the population. For statistics of the sample, what we know about the reality is coming from the subset of things, let's say subset of Americans, subset of Canadians that we know. Uh, let's say if I want to know the average income or the proportion of people who will buy my product in the population, uh, for average of the people in my sample, which is accessible to us, we use English letters. Okay, English is earthy and it's the language that we use. So when I want to refer to the average of uh, income of the people in my sample, I refer to that as X bar. And I, but what I want to know is not really the average of the people in the sample. Just think about this. Uh, you are the production manager in a company and you want to know what is the average length of the product that you are producing, okay? How many products you are producing? Let's say if you're producing pencils, you're producing millions of pencils. And if you want to find the average length of your pen, pencils, you cannot take all of those millions of pencils and find their average. So what do you do? What do you do to understand the average length of your pencils? Take a sample. Very good. So you take a sample, like you take these samples for pencils, and then you measure them, okay? If I ask you, like this is our sample. If I ask you, what is the average length of pencils in your sample? Do you know that? Yes. Yes, sample is in our hand. So for the sample, we know. That's the only thing that we know. So we know the average of the sample. Therefore, this is what we know. The average of the sample, the statistic of this. So statistic is basically a name for what we know. That, but it's tiny. A statistic is a name for that tiny thing about the universe that we know. The tiny thing about all of the possible customers, about their purchasing behavior uh, that we know. <coughs> but are we really interested in knowing what is the average of that sample? Is that really our interest? Now it's fine. Yeah, we are not interested. Just notice that although the only thing that we know is our sample, that is not what we are interested in. Right? So instead of uh, that sample, our real interest is about the parameter of the population. So that brings us, like so far, um, we are in the middle of chapter one, actually. And uh, I have defined for you what is the sample, what is the population. <clears throat> population is the, all of the things that we are interested in. And sample is the subset that we have access to. Of course, we want to have the biggest subset. The goal of the course is to be able, the witchery, is to be able to predict the parameter of the population, that universe that is not accessible to us, based on this tiny sample, okay? So the witchery is that we are able to predict the behavior of the population based on a tiny sample. That's why it is a witchery. This technique that enables us to go from the statistic of the sample and then predict the parameter of the population, what would be a good name for a field of science that basically all of the fields of science do this, use this technique. To use a statistic to predict something about the population who relies on the statistic of the sample. What would be a good name for this field? that studies a statistic to predict the parameters. What um, is the field that studies statistic of different samples? 
Isn't it just statistics? Something better. You got damn your dollar. <laughs> Here you are. Yes, this field is called statistics. Now you understand. So, do we love statistics? Answer me. Yes. As humans, do we love statistics? Yeah. Yes. Why? Why? Why do we love? We're able to predict. Uh, no, yeah, yes, that, that, is, that is the only thing that we know. Just think about it. Statistics is like the science of the only things that we know. So I want you to understand that when you're talking about the statistics, it's the science of what we know. And being able to use what we know to do this witchery, to predict things that are, we don't know. Okay? So this field, that, the reason that this field is so important, the reason that it is a required for course in, uh, uh, in business, it's a required course in engineering, it's a required course in physics, it's a required course in economics. Even if you want to know human psychology, you need the statistics. That's the reason. Because the statistics is the science of studying what we know, to predict what we don't know. Now, there, is a, there has been a debate about what we know, and it is important for us. So um, the debate is this. Um, we all, all of us agreed at the beginning of the class that we cannot say that we know anything, you know, anything about the universe. We, we cannot claim that we know. And that led to a culture of uh, uh, what is called postmodernism. You probably have seen that, like the people who say, oh, um, how many, uh, do you think that uh, uh, people will buy this product? The person says, I believe that people will buy this product, but my sister believes that people don't buy this product. So let's go have a cup of coffee, okay? So this, this is called postmodernism, okay? If you apply postmodernism to physics, it's like saying that, you know, I believe that 20% uh, of matter in the world is oxygen, but my sister says 30% is oxygen. And who can, well, we, don't, we cannot know things. So I have my opinion, you have your opinion, let's have a cup of coffee, okay? This, I have an opinion, you have your opinion. Its root is in that real thing that we can never know, we cannot never be sure about something. We cannot say we are sure that Newton is right, or we are sure, because everything that we are, we know is based on a tiny sample. But on the other hand, this witchery that you will learn in this course will destroy the postmodernist in you, okay? how it will destroy the postmodernist in you, okay? Based on the statistic of the sample, we predict the parameter of the population, okay? So let me give you uh, something that you can even know about sample and population from your grade five. So listen carefully. I will randomly choose one of you to answer this. We are interested in the, in the average of the population. Let's say average income of Canadians. We take a sample, in the sample, we observe the average of the income of the people in our sample. Let's say we take a sample of 1,000 people, a pretty big sample. And in the sample, we'll see that average income of the people in the sample is $45,000, okay? Now, I ask one of you, uh, James, pick a number. Uh, a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We took a sample from Canadians, and the average of our sample shows that $45,000 is the average of our sample. And we, we know it because we ask each one of them, how much was your income? So we are sure that the average income of our sample of these 1,000 people is 45,000. What is your best estimate for the parameter of the population? What is your best estimate for the um, average income of Canadians? Uh, Our sample sure. showed that the average of 1,000 Canadians is $45,000. Yeah. 
What is your best estimate for average income of Canadian? $45. $45,000. Right. Okay. So this is grade five. If I tell you that the average of my sample is 45,000, that's the only thing that we know. Like, do you want to say, like I tell you that the average of the sample is 45,000. Will you say that the average ego of Canadian is 90? Like that would be stupid. Like <laughs> that is the only evidence that we have. Our sample is the only thing that we know. So obviously our best estimate for the population that we don't know would be the average of the sample. Like, do you see this simple thing? 